How do you know if you're having headaches from migraines, sinuses, or from your neck? Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper from Princeton Spine and Joint Center, and today I'd like to discuss one of the most common causes of headaches that often gets misdiagnosed as migraines or sinus headaches. Now, migraines can be horrific to experience. Often, there's an identifiable trigger, such as eating a certain food like chocolate, uh, or a trigger can be a change in the pressure outside or a certain smell. Almost anything can unfortunately be a trigger, but often migraines also just come out of the clear blue sky. Typical symptoms of a migraine would include nausea, vomiting, blurry vision, increased sensitivity to light, sound or noise, and of course, terrible, terrible pain in a part or all of the head. About a fifth of people with migraines also experience an aura prior to the migraine, an aura and or uh, there are a group of symptoms that are like warning signals to the body that a migraine is going to be coming. Auras can be visual, like a bright flashing dot or light or a blind spot in your vision, or it can be speech changes or a change in your sense of taste or smell. Now, sinus headaches generally feel like an infection in the sinuses and often present with a bad pressure around the eyes, cheeks, or forehead. Often, sinus headache pain is described as throbbing, and it's often positional where if you lean forward or if you lie down, the symptoms get worse, um, and pressing on the involved sinus often is very painful. Headache pain that originates in the neck generally comes from the small joints in the neck called the facet joints. Now, this type of headache typically starts with pain in the suboccipital region over here and refers up into the top of the head and sometimes behind the eye or cheek. Now, while the pain typically refers this way, sometimes people just have pain that starts in their eye or in the top of the head. The pain is often worse with bad posture or using a computer a lot or looking at the phone in our hand for a prolonged period of time. Turning your head from side to side or extending the head backwards sometimes make the pain, makes the pain worse um, as these movements will tend to irritate the small little joints in the back of the spine if those joints were already inflamed and painful. When patients have headache pain that's coming from the neck, there's often no neck pain at all, although sometimes the neck will also hurt. Now, as you can see from these different descriptions, there's overlap in the ways that the different headaches present, but there are also important distinctions. Now, one of the ways that the distinctions get really blurry is that sometimes a headache that originates in the neck, for example, will actually be the trigger for a true migraine. So, for example, I had a patient who had terrible intermittent headaches that for years were diagnosed as migraines. And she would get terrible pain in the suboccipital region and in the front of the head. And she would also get nausea and she would vomit. Now, sometimes she would also have visual symptoms such as blurry vision. And for years, she was given migraine medications. Um, they were mostly variants of sumatriptan. And these medications would help her about 60% and they would allow her to function a lot better than she would have otherwise. Now, she eventually found her way to me, and I honestly wasn't sure if the headaches were part, uh, partly coming from the neck or not. Now, often you can't be sure until you just test the neck to find out. And the gold standard test for this is actually not an MRI, although you should typically get one in a case like this. But because the little joints that cause pain in the, neck, pain in the head from the neck are so small, and they generally look at least a little arthritic on an MRI, even in a 30 or 40 year old, the only way to really find out if the facet joints are causing the pain is to inject them. Now, if you inject the facet joints and the headaches go away, then you know they were causing the pain. And if you inject them and nothing changes in terms of the headaches, then you know those joints were not causing the pain. Well, in this patient, the injections worked like a charm and her headaches went away, albeit temporarily. So this established that the facet joints were the cause of at least most of the pain. And Treating facet joints is a relatively easy thing to treat usually. We ended up performing a procedure called a radiofrequency rhizotomy in which the little sensory nerves that innervate the joints are, are severed using radiofrequency energy. And this makes it impossible for those joints to transmit their, their pain signals to the brain. So once we did this procedure, her symptoms completely resolved, all of them. Now, that was over a decade ago, and luckily for her, the symptoms never returned. I say luckily because usually those little nerves that you burn uh, with radiofrequency energy, usually they grow back in about a year later and you have to do it again. Now, in my opinion, the facet joints uh, in this patient's neck weren't causing the more typical migraine symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and blurry vision, at least not directly. 
I think that the neck causing the headaches trigger a more classic migraine. Now this would explain why the sumatriptan medications were pretty helpful for her in the short term. In the short term, sumatriptans help migraines, but they wouldn't generally help headaches that were originating from the neck, at least we wouldn't think so. Once the headaches from the neck were resolved though, the migraines were no longer being triggered. So in short, sometimes you have to test the facet joints to see if they're causing some or all of the headache symptoms. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. Um, as always, I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future video topics. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you, and I wish you the best of health.